Module 4.3, getting link prospects to perceive you as an authority, getting your website in order. And this is all, uh, this is, uh, well, these are all important videos, but if your website isn't in order when you reach out to your golden prospect, you might ruin your chances of building a relationship with that golden prospect forever. That's just the way it goes, and it's a, and it's a, and it's a cold hard fact of life. Sometimes we only get one opportunity. Well, we know we only may get one opportunity to make a first impression. So it's important that you get your website in order because if it's not in order, when you reach out to a golden prospect, they might they might just look the other way. Remember that filter I was talking about? in the last video how we all have filters on our head that filters out advertisements and it's true because i think the average person sees 1500 advertisement or more and more a day and i i forget that number now but it's probably a lot less now that people are staying home more and they learned about ad blockers but even then we see a lot of advertisements and we have filters in place that protects our brains because otherwise we wouldn't be able to function if we actually th looked at every ad we saw and sat down and considered whether or not we needed it and the pros and cons. We wouldn't be able to function. So we filter that off. Now, why am I bringing all this up? Well, your best link prospects, whether they be golden prospects or silver prospects, they're, they're the same way. So they have a filter too. But not only do they filter ads out, but they filter out link requests. They filter out people trying to get something for free. They filter them out because they have no time for it, for that. And so they figured if you come in looking for something for free, you're always going to be that person. And they don't have enough time in a day as it is. They have thousands and thousands of followers sometimes. So if, if they make an impression, if your first impression with them is weak, and it's going to hurt your chances of earning links. So I talked about establishing yourself as a teacher as being a sure way to getting link prospects to perceive you as an authority. And now, if you're a teacher, you need to have a classroom. And that's where your website comes in. And this counts too, even if you have an e-commerce site, especially if you have an e-commerce site, you should have a teaching blog on your site. And if you sell skateboards, you should have a blog that helps people pick out the best skateboards or how to find the best parks or maybe instructions on how to do their little things they do on boards, which is, to me, it's insane. Let's, yeah, let's write our skateboard down these handles, down these cement steps. What could possibly go wrong? But there's a lot of kids into that. So if you sell skateboards, you might want to share how to do that safely or how to wear equipment that looks cool or how to adjust your equipment so you can keep doing those cool things without busting your coconut open up on their course somewhere. And you could become that teacher and sell all kinds of boards. Now, you don't need all the training in the world. You just have to show an uh, that you have an emphasis towards training, not just selling your boards. And I, and I hope I and I hope that makes sense because as if they're perceiving, if your prospects just perceive you as a vendor, what's going to happen is, and they look at your site and it's not in order. You, they're just they're going to just they're just going to go on with their day and they may never they may filter your name out every time you email them or contact them again and that's like i said that's just a cold hard fact of life that our best link prospects get hammered with link requests eric ward always talked about the number of requests he received just it was just and it was uh something that bothered him because so many were so bad, the, the link requests were, that uh, he, he, he turned on a really big filter that was really hard to get through to him. And, and then I think that's why I had to pull out, <laughs> I had built this system uh, just getting to Eric and then started doing it with uh, all my other clients. All right, so let's talk about what you need to do to get your website in order so when your prospects get your link request or they first contact with you and they see your website address and they go to your website and they to check you out to give you the sniff test now this is uh 
this is what you can do to 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 pass that sniff test. First of all, the good news is Superman had phone booths. He walked into the phone booth, stepped back out. He was an instant authority, an instant hit. Now, you can't uh, turn into Superman or Superwoman. At least I don't think you can. But you do have a website. Superman had phone booths. You have your website. Your website will be the thing that transforms you into an ordinary, average citizen. Into a superhero. Or at least an authority in your industry. But sometimes those are like superheroes to, to, to the people in the industry. All right. What, what do you do? First thing you do is you treat a part of your website as if it were a virtual classroom. A teacher has to have a classroom. And that teacher, that classroom needs to be on your property. It could be in a Facebook group. That would work. It could be in a LinkedIn group. That would work. But the best classrooms would be classrooms that you control. And that will be on your property. Because the effort that it takes to get good students to your classroom you might, they will go they'll 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 go to the course class regardless of where your your content is so that's why it's important that you uh, you put this information your virtual classroom on your website usually in your blog or you can make uh, yeah usually in your blog all right so uh, whoop, whoop, let's relax all right setting up a virtual classroom how do you do that <laughs> that's pretty easy actually Help people with your content. Just, just don't be about selling your content. You ever go to the site where they have a blog and all they have is coupon codes? for On sale today, 15% off. On sale today, 15% off. Buy two for price of one. And you can look and you look at their blog content. All that they're doing is trying to sell their, their, their skateboards or their widgets or whatever it is they're selling. So... It's, there's nothing to teach there. And I, and I said in the book, this analogy, imagine if you, uh, you got into college and uh, you're, you're very excited and you go back as an adult and you're back in school and you're so happy that you, you have the money to go back to school and you have the time and you can study and you're going to just know you're going to ace everything because you really want to be there. So you sit down and you're studying and... Uh, but you don't, and the teacher uh, is uh, comes over to you and says, uh, if uh, you sign up for my tutor services, I'll give you your textbook. And this would be a better example, say, if it was in high school. And you're in high school, and, you're, and, that, and that, let's say if you, you went to your favorite class, and the teacher tried to sell you the textbook. I was going to say, well, everybody has to buy textbooks in college but in high school you did so high school is a better analogy so a better metaphor so as in high school what if you sat down and at your desk and instead of getting a book you got an order sheet to order the book you wouldn't be really your 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 opinion towards that teacher would be wow man she just given me this order form to make money or she really is this is this really a book that's going to help me out? So that's the same with your content. Help people with your content. Don't give don't hide your best content behind a price tag, and definitely don't hide it even behind opt-ins. Create no opt-in tutorials. They're a lot easier to create than uh, than putting a book on your site. And I showed you in another video how I advertise my book on my site. Uh, I just have this image on every page on my website. And, uh, and it builds my authority. So that's something that, uh, that I recommend you do. If you can't write a book, what you can create are no opt-in tutorials. And these are just big blog posts. And uh, I created a bunch of them. I have do-it-yourself guides. I have link building strategies. I even have the, the video series. So uh, these, these are huge resources that I do not require an opt-in to get onto. Why? Because I want to be taken, as, I want prospects, and I want my, my, my buyer prospects too, to think of me as a teacher. Why do I, do I want to be a teacher? Yeah, I like teaching. I happen to like it a lot. And, uh, but I want them to perceive me as an authority, so they'll buy my book or they'll buy my course. And the, so that's, that's why it's important to... Uh, to uh, have both, if in, in, it's a lot easier to create an, a, a tutorial on how to choose the right skateboard than it is to uh, to write a 
the whole book on, on on skateboarding. So start with the no opt in tutorials and and don't put any fluff content. And no, that's content that you put on a site. It's just pure fluff. When you feed your kids a meal, you don't give them a bunch of cotton candy. You, at least I don't think you do. Uh, and you feed them something. You feed your children something uh, substantial, something that will give their bodies nutrition and the energy they need to grow, and to go on with their very high calorie day. They're very the the just amazing how much energy kids have. But you don't feed your your you don't feed your 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 readers your students fluff content instead you give them content that that's a tutorial and so you don't give them advertisements you don't give them uh coupon codes on your blog treat your blog not as if it were a marketing square treat your blog as if it were your virtual classroom and you don't need to have that many op tutorials on there to uh to get something uh to to, to be helping your your readers and you don't need to have uh, you don't need to have a million pages like uh, you just have to be helping the people just show somewhere on your site you're helping people and it can't be like 90 percent advertising and promos and 10 percent helping you should be a hundred percent about helping on your blog and then people will find your sales and your your product and your services when they through your navigation and maybe if you want to put a sidebar ad somewhere on your site, that would be work too to get people over to your money pages. So even then, you could still uh, help people with your content and just go 100% in treating your, your content on your blog as if it were a virtual classroom and create tutorials. Not to earn links, but to help people. And as readers hit your site, they'll read the content. So if you're going to write tutorials, don't, don't think of it as link bait. And it will get links, and you can, and you will be able to get links from it. But it's more important to be able to just let people read your content. Otherwise, they're just gonna if they opt in, if they don't opt in, they're not going to know. And most golden prospects aren't going to come to your site and opt in to your to your to your list to get your tutorial. They're just not going to do that. And uh, that's just the way that goes. So to get your website in order, first of all, uh, put some tutorials on there. Put your book on it, like I did. And no fluff content and treat your blog or a section of your blog at least like it's your classroom. So that way, and, and I like I said, I'd like 100% of your blog to be about a, a classroom and about content helping people. Otherwise, what if it was 50-50? You got 50% promotions and you got 50% uh, tutorials. What happens if the uh, Golden Prospect hits your site to check it out before they consider linking to you and they hit one of the promos instead of <laughs> instead of uh, one of the tutorials? Well, they're going to think everything is a promo and they're just going to leave. So that's why I say uh, make your blog just be a classroom and uh, leave it as a classroom. And uh, you, you'll find that you'll, you'll get good results and you'll get a lot more prospects thinking of you as an authority as they hit your site because remember they're going to think of you as a teacher and teachers are authorities they're not going to say, oh there's an authority in the industry they're going to say oh there's a teacher in the industry cool look it's all about teaching huh sweet huh? i'll link to it all right what else can you do to get your site ready well some of this is obvious you need a great site design if your site is ugly you can still earn links seriously because we're not earning links based upon the merit of our content we're based upon the social capital we've earned from the link prospect so but you need a great de site design and uh that's just goes without saying and and i just use templates wordpress so i don't know anything about design uh, i knew on page optimization i know a lot okay great content this is the content i was talking about over here it's not fluff content you write some big no opt well, you write some big no opt-in tutorials, but what about the rest of your content? Well, that's if you can't write fluff content and you're going to help people with your content and not everything you write is going to be this long tutorial. So some of it's just going to be content. What, ty what type of content should it be in order to get your prospects to view you as an authority? It should be great content. And I, I'm sure you already knew that. You, you peeked ahead, didn't you? All right. Well, what is, what's great content? Well, first of all, it's content that people can read and people can understand. So I highly recommend that you write your content in a way not only that sets you up as a teacher, but also as, as not as a college teacher, but as a fifth grade teacher. 
So you write all your content at a, at a fifth grade reading level. Doing that is going to make it a lot easier because a lot of times your readers will just skim your content. And your golden prospect is going to do the same. It's not that they can't read above the, a fifth grade reading level. Is you just make it a lot easier for your content to be skimmed when you're right at a, at a fifth grade reading level. And it's, and it's a lot faster than even than seventh grade. You wouldn't think it is, but there's a significant difference between fifth grade reading level and seventh grade reading level and a tool you can use is called Hemingway app uh, it's right here you can find it at HemingwayApp.com it's what I use to write at a uh, fifth grade reading level and you can uh, buy a desktop app I think it's you can, let me show you you can buy it for 10 bucks and uh, that way you can save it on your desktop or you can just use the free version right here on HemingwayApp.com and uh, what you do is you type your stuff in here and it shows you, uh, it gives you uh, things, uh, suggestions on what you need to fix and it shows you the current grade level. So I would highly recommend you get good with uh, read, writing at a fifth grade reading level because you'll get more content read. And especially with Golden Prospects, they're fast and they move quick and they're just coming to check you out. It's not that they have a problem to solve and they're really sniffing your content out. All right, let me check this person out before I link to it. And you want to make sure that they can read your content. And so set up a virtual classroom, but make sure it's for fifth grade, uh, fifth graders. It just makes your content easier to consume. And Hemingway app is the app that uh, I, I use to do that. And you can use a free one online or pay 10 bucks to be able to have it on your desktop. Another thing you can do to get your website in order is do something about your colors. And a lot of the, the templates are so, so ugly. And getting colors that people like on your website is such a cheat, a hack that, it's, that I'm surprised everybody doesn't do that. It's like as much money as the NFL puts into their team colors because they make their money, well, a big portion of their money from selling jerseys and from selling hats and from selling jackets and par parkas and people usually buy based on color and so the nfl spends a lot of effort going over uh and doing research on uh, nfl colors so what i recommend you do is go to this site it's jim nielsen jim hyphen nielsen.com forward slash team colors let me pull it up and uh, you can find all kinds of different color combinations and there's all kinds of leagues you can get. I don't know what that is. I think it's probably a soccer league or football league, European football. And uh, then you can get Major League Baseball and soccer, uh, Major League Soccer here in the States, uh, NBA teams and NFL teams and NHL teams. I like NFL colors. Why? Because they have more money. They spend more money on research. They sell more jerseys. They do just they do some more research. So what you do is you go through these colors and you base your color scheme only on these colors. Like I do my websites. If you notice, my site is done in the Miami Dolphins colors. That's all Miami Dolphins colors. If you go look, it's the same numbers as, uh, as this. And those are the, the and they're very easy to edit templates to, to put these different colors in. And you can get a different feel for that too. Let me go to, uh, let me go to Eric's site. And Eric goes, yeah, I want an NFL color. And I said, all right, pick your color, pick your team. And I sent him that link because I was doing site work for him. And uh, lo and behold, he went and chose the Dolphins colors too. And so here it is. So even if you use a Dolphins color, like here's one site, Eric's site. There's the orange. There's the light blue. There's the dark blue. And, uh, and then here's my site. There's the blue, there's the orange. So they kind of look different because I, had, I gave them a different layout. I didn't want them to look exactly. I said, they're going to think we're Siamese twins. Is Eric, we got to change our colors a little bit. And he goes, but you, got, you picked the best one. The Dolphins is the best colors, and it is. Uh, the aqua and having the orange as a highlight color. Like you'll see in my videos, I'm always wearing an orange hat. I, I painted our computer repair business this color. And uh, the orange is just a perfect highlight that just – draws attention and the human's eye really likes blue and aqua and together it makes a good good uh color combination so uh go to jim nielsen uh jim jim nielsen.com team colors 
and to uh, get your uh, get your site figured out in NFL Team Colors. Let me show you something too. And if you're running ads, this is what I like about Team Colors. Is let's say here's my Dolphins. Uh, if I you want you want to keep your your branding consistent across all your channels. And sometimes people will use like one color, then they'll use a different color, then they'll use a different color. Everything we do is in this color combination. Whether it's our 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 what well, circulars we send out circulars we're circulars uh like uh, whether it was our when we were sending our newsletter out our print newsletter out when we had one uh that was the case when uh whenever uh we built a landing page we used it we used it in ads we used it in everything every image we created on our site has those colors it's just um, but if you pick a team that has a bunch of different accent colors, it really gives you a lot of room to play with on your ads. So you could have your site in all these colors. And if you're doing Facebook ads, you could easily use these colors on your on your ads. So when they click over to your site, it's, they 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 recognize the color scheme, and uh, they're gonna like they they won't recognize it usually. That hey, that's a Jacksonville Jaguars colors. How dare he? And uh, no, they that's wow, those are cool colors. And those are cool colors. Look at that. The, the blue and the accents, the way they use the accents. So use your accents and try to find one with an orange. And if you want, not just like this, is ugly. nothing against Cleveland Brown fans. And I don't know what's going on in Ohio. Orange and black and orange and black. Yeah, I mean, you might, I mean, that's fine. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys one is really cool because it has a bunch of different shades of blue. And, and like I said, you can even go into uh, to whatever. Now, I do this too. So if I have a client, say, from, uh, from Tampa, and I'm doing a new site for them, and I'm doing a new site design for them, and he wants new colors or she wants new colors, uh, it's usually the male attorneys hiring me, though. I don't know. And uh, so... It's uh, and I will create the site using Tampa Bay Buccaneer colors, so you can like and so their visitors will will won't even recognize it's Tampa Bay colors, but they'll like it and they won't even know why, and so that's a little hack. Get your colors coordinated, and uh, and like look at all these shades of green for the Philadelphia. That's just beautiful. And if you get your site, yeah, your sidebar in this color and your and your headers in this color or this color. I mean, and then put your links in this color. And uh, like we did on Eric's site, look how we did the links in orange. And uh, that's the accent. And that's that's just, it really is just a little extra you can add to your site that doesn't cost you any money. So uh, get your colors straight. And uh, you'll, you'll, you'll like it if you do, because uh, a lot more people will, uh, will consider you an authority of all. It doesn't make sense that colors would make you an authority, but, but it's true. All right, so getting your site in order before you reach out to your golden prospect. Finally, what can you do? Don't be camera shy. Don't be like me. I was camera shy for so long. I've used avatars. I've used, uh, I used just voiceovers. I didn't, I didn't do live cameras. In fact, the very first people who have ever seen me in a, a, in, in a live camera feed was, uh, was Link Moses Private subscribers. And, you, and this is the first course I've ever done that, that you've actually seen me as I was talking in some of the videos. So I was very camera shy. What's the problem with being camera shy? Well, first of all, you never want to stop at your limitations. I know I didn't look like George Clooney, and for some reason I thought I could write like George Clooney, and so I would write like George Clooney. And I don't know if George Clooney could write, but I'm a fairly decent copywriter. So I would pop on uh, somebody's. Uh, I would get an image that I had legal rights to use, and that hardly anybody else was using. And but I was camera shy, and the problem with being camera shy is people bond with other people, not with content. So if you can. And if you can put some smiling pictures of yourself and not be and show yourself like out with your family and just show yourself being real. And don't be afraid to put pictures of your kids on your website and your family on your website where you're having a good time. Don't just be serious all the time. People will bond with you. Oh, I have kids, too. Or I have grandkids. Oh, look. And like on my site, I'm showing my I'm carrying one of my, my youngest daughter on my shoulders. And, and it's like 
what, what does that have to do with SEO? It's showing people that I'm a real person. And it's giving people a, a, somebody to bond with. And, uh, and it doesn't matter that I'm not George Clooney. It doesn't matter if you don't look like George Clooney. Uh, don't be camera shy. People have to bond. People will bond with you. People have been bonding with you in your face for your entire life. And they have with me, too. So I was just being dumb, being camera shy. And uh, it's such a sh it's just a shy boy. And it's just a waste. I just wish I would have just popped right out. Uh, the cool thing about putting your face on, on your website or doing videos is that you'll start losing weight if you're a little overweight. <laughs> Trust me. You're like, oh, I got to do something. I want to be on camera thin. So don't be shy about about getting on camera uh, and spruce up your site a little bit and uh, treat your blog as a virtual classroom and uh, you'll you'll transform yourself you'll have a website that transform you in, into a mild average day vendor into an authority in your in your industry and that's good news because anybody could do it thanks that's uh that's this video. I'll see you the next video where we'll talk about uh, how to spring clean your social media accounts before you reach out with your golden prospects because more likely than not, the first time your golden prospects will will interact with you will be on your social media accounts. And if you have any problems in that so in those social media accounts that it might put them off, then you may never even get them to come to get your website to begin with. They won't even click over to your website. They'll look at your social media and they'll think, well, that's a mess. And then they'll just filter you out. They won't block you, but they'll filter you. And uh, you don't want to do that. So uh, let's go talk about that in the next video.